Okay, so we are now going to go over the specific bones um, that we're dealing with in today's lab. So here we're looking at a complete pelvic girdle, all right? So I no longer want you to refer to this as um, hip bones or anything or the pelvis or anything. It is the pelvic girdle. Now a pelvic girdle is actually made out of three bones, okay? One of the bones, the middle bone here, that is the sacrum, all right? It may look familiar from this view, the sacrum, which is the last part of your vertebral column. The other two bones are actually um, the same bone. There's just two of them. We call them coxal bones, okay? So when you take one part of it off and the other side as well, you call it a coxal bone, okay? It's not a pelvic bone. It's not a hip bone. This is a coxal bone. And when you put one coxal bone plus another coxal bone plus a sacrum, you get a pelvic girdle, all right? Now, on the individual coxal bones, there's actually three fused bones that you do need to be specific about, all right? So I have it taped off of where um, the bones kind of either start and then flow to or end, all right? So in the orange, we're going to be outlining what's called the ilium, all right? So the ilium starts on the lateral side of the pelvic girdle, all right? So this is anterior, this is posterior, these are lateral sides. So it starts on the lateral side and moves posterior, all right? And it is the largest of the three uh, fused coxal bones. So that's the ilium here in orange, all right? And then in green, you have the, um, the ischium, okay? So the ischium is lateral and inferior, all right? So it's really just everything coming down here is the ischium. And then in blue, you have outlined the pubis, and the pubis is the most medial and anterior bone, all right? Um, and it's pubis with an S on the end, okay? So the pubis, the ischium, and the ilium all make up one coxal bone. Two coxal bones plus a sacrum make up a pelvic girdle, all right? So that's the girdle. Then we can go on into the um, uh, lower limbs, all right? So we're gonna start with um, the first lower limb, which is the uh, femur, okay? So to make sure that we're looking at it in the most anatomical position, you want the head, this ping pong ball looking object up here in the most uh, superior part of the bone, this is your medial marker, all right? You want this to be facing medially. And that is because the femur, or the head of the femur connects to the lateral side of the pelvic girdle to make that ball, ball in socket joint so that we have movement, all right? So if the head is medial, then that's great. To make sure that you're on the anterior side, you're gonna look at um, the distal portion or the inferior portion of the bone you really want it to be smooth right here, okay? If it's smooth in the uh, very lower portion, anterior portion, then you know that you're looking at the patellar surface, all right? So that's where your kneecap sits. So you want it to be nice and smooth so that it doesn't rub so you don't have pain, all right? If you look on the posterior side of the femur, you can see there's two very large projections coming right at you, right? If you look at your knee, Look down at your knee. Do you see two very large projections coming out? I hope not. All right, so that means that this is posterior and this is anterior, all right? And this is medial, all right? So that's the femur. Um, now for the lower part of your upper, or lower limbs, the lowest part of your upper, lower limbs, um, you have a few bones. I wanted to show you what they look like uh, all articulating because all of our up, standing up skeletons just don't have these. Um, so what you have here is actually your patella. This is your kneecap, all right? So that's what's going to sit on the patellar surface of the femur, okay? So you have the patella and it just kind of floats around. And really, you don't need to know anything else about the patella, all right? Then the main largest bone of the um, lower part of your lower limb 
is uh, what we call the tibia. Then the skinny bone is the fibula, and then of course we have the foot. I'm going to go over the foot in a separate video, all right? So to look at the tibia and the fibula disarticulated, this right here is your tibia, okay? Please, please do not call it a tibula. It is a tibia, okay? And you want the smaller, skinnier portion to be in the inferior position and this large, thick portion to be at the top. And that is because you want a large surface for your femur to sit on, okay? Then we're going to look down here and we kind of see this like little hook coming off of the bottom of the tibia, all right? This is your medial marker, all right? This guy needs to be facing medial. If you look at the articulating portion, you'll see that guy is hanging to the medial portion of your body. And you know that it's medial because it lines up with your big toe. And if you look down at your feet right now, you'll see that your big toe is lined up with your medial line, okay? So that medial marker right there um, is on the medial side of the tibia. And then to tell anterior versus posterior for the tibia, you wanna come back up to the top and actually feel around for a very large um, uh, uh, rough portion, all right? We, I guess you won't be feeling, but you can see a very large rough portion at the top of the tibia, all right? So this right here is a tuberosity. We saw on the humerus, there was a deltoid tuberosity, which was also a rough portion. This is the tibial tuberosity. So that tibial tuberosity, that rough patch of bone, needs to be on the anterior side, okay? If you flip it and look to the posterior side, you'll see that there's no rough surface, okay? So tibial tuberosity on the anterior side, and then we actually call this the medial malleolus. You want that to be medial, all right? And that's how to correctly uh, hold the tibia. And then lastly, we have the fibula. Honestly, there's nothing going on here. Just like the radius, it's kind of pointless, and it's just a stick. Okay?